Hey guys, Michael Ash, Imrod Air, Snow Peak Air Guns. Uh, we got our samples, got them out, uh, went through them, tuned them all up. Uh, basically blueprinted the rifle, um, struck a really nice balance in the uh, valve spring, transfer port, uh, hammer spring. Got some really great news on these guys. They're on their way to you. We look forward to hearing your input and your reviews on them. Uh, the accuracy on them is outstanding. Couldn't be happier. The power level on them, way past our expectations. Uh, doing a, a short video here. Uh, Going to explain a little bit about what we did to them. We're going to explain a little bit our master tune kit, uh, how much it is, how much uh, tuning and all that stuff is on the P12. Not a whole lot of really necessary, so going to be really expensive for you guys. We're going to set this down for now. Uh, also want to remind you, the M10 guys, uh, we just got the one sample right now. The rest are coming. Huge power. Big, big power. Much, much more than I ever thought. Uh, thank you so much, Snow Peak. Um, they really understated this air rifle. Um, we've, we've got the barrels uh, already 30 cal. They're already machined, ready to go. Uh, that's, that's regular uh, 30 cal. Um, Going to be a real nice deal. But uh, what I wanted to do right now is put up a video right quick and let you guys know, especially for the first guys that were the first 20, what you can expect, what we did. Um, like I said, we went through the air gun, made every inch of it uh, the same on every one uh, the quality and the fit and finish on these things excellent guys couldn't be happier they came in shooting really really hot shooting really heavy pellets so we backed up consulted with Phil wingman thank you very much Phil uh, hub and Huma regs and, and all the guys uh, all the input from all the other countries I really appreciate it a lot uh, on behalf of Imbrot Air and Snow Peak, uh, I want to thank you guys. Um, about our our parts and our Master Tune kit, I wanted to go over that a little bit with you. We found that with this kit and the spring that comes installed in your Imrod Air um, P12, um, it shoots great with 15 to 18, even 21 grain pellets. Has a great deal of adjustability with the spring that we have installed. Um, you're looking at low 700s to nearly a thousand feet per second with the spring that's in there still real consistent great shot count accuracies there all the way around um, <clears throat> but some of the things we've listed here and, and having a kit very inexpensive going to save you a ton on not having to spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars in the future to enjoy the p12 and have it last you for a long long time okay i'm going to go over some of those things and you know the guys that took advantage of the wingman special, we appreciate you so much. You know, we, we gave you the $50 off, and we'd like a chance to earn that money back. We wanted, we've done our homework, and, and I want to go over some of the things we found in this kit. Now, first of all, it's some basic stuff. Uh, we have a couple of cleaning rods. They're plastic cleaning rods, what we use in the P12 and the M10 uh, to not do any damage at all to the barrel. They're, uh, they're a little bit heavier than the standard weed eater line, so you can actually push with them. And there's two sizes. One is to use the standard rifle patch. We get these at Walmart. Uh, 250 counts, about four bucks. And uh, these are a fairly tight fit for doing some really uh, some scrubbing in there. For when these are new, they have a little protective coating in the barrel. That gets set out very nicely. And the smaller patches for your day-to-day, -day, just getting the light lead dusting out of them. Uh, haven't had any flyer issues at all with them, and we've shot them a bunch. So, uh, real nice little little deal there. Not not a huge expense, but nice to have. Um, we think that all air guns, especially pre-charged air guns, need to come with a degasser. So, we've manufactured a degasser. It's uh, it's a very simple part. I'll get you some close-ups of all this in just a minute. This is kind of just the intro. Um, this degasser simply goes in the rear where the power adjuster is, you, you take that out and the uh, hammer spring, install this and you can degas your rifle. It has an added benefit too. When you install this, you can leave your rifle knowing that the breech, it, it locks the breech where the bolt cannot be opened 
So if you have small children around, things like that, you don't have to worry about them getting this thing, accidentally discharging it. It makes it where the breech won't even open to put a pellet in in the first place. So a little added safety feature there. Also with our kit comes a tool to disassemble your air tube, the front cap off your air tube. What we found is if you try to repeatedly take it off via the gauge to degas it or anything like that, uh, it doesn't take long before you end up rupturing the gauge, blowing out the glass, things like that. Um, also, we're real mindful that the filth probe porthole in there must remain absolutely burr free. So, we came up with a simple solution, an expensive solution, and it's part of the entire kit. Um, it's a precision ground shoulder bolt. It's made from hardened material and it's very, very smooth. I'll show you how it works in a minute. It goes inside your fill probe uh, porthole and the degasser is threaded in the end. So when you screw the two together, it comes up with a little wrench. It won't pinch your tube, it's spaced just right, and you can unscrew the front, front cap very, very easily for any kind of reg adjustments or any kind of tuning, whether you want to go with a deep hanger or, or the reg, uh, makes it real handy. If you want to tune it yourself, save yourself some money, good way to go. Um, of course, you know the gun comes with the Allen wrenches, and we've included in the kit an extra set of O-rings. It comes with a set of O-rings, and these O-rings are from the O-ring store. They're the 70 and 90 durometer uh, Boone O-rings. Really nice stuff. Also has a Dowdy washer in there for in between your fill probe and the Foster fitting. Um, those come with the air rifles. Really nice feature. You know, all of us get hung up with getting a new air gun and forget to get the male Foster or you know some of the other small components and you end up having to order them you know from each individual company by the time you order them and pay the shipping you, know, you end up getting quite an expense and having to wait to shoot your new air gun we want to make sure these come with that kind of stuff so the first 20 guys we sent the whole thing the whole tune kit everything so you can report to the other guys hey it is what they say it is or we didn't like this or that and we can alter it to make sure that it's the best out there okay those those come with it and pretty standard stuff um, one other aspect of this air rifle, some of you guys are going to want to shoot the lighter pellets, the hobby pellets, some of the alloy pellets, and this air gun is way too strong to shoot it as is. However, we have secured some extra hammer springs. Now these hammer springs, we have the one installed in the gun, and it's great. This one is only four thousandths of an inch smaller wire size, but what it does it allows you to just simply insert it in the back without any disassembly whatsoever, swap this simple spring out, and you can shoot the lightweight pellets and the alloy pellets at a full range of feet per second. If you want to have your kids shoot it, if you want to shoot it, raise your shot count tremendous with or without the rig. Great way to go. And also, we didn't forget you guys that like the big stuff, the big power. Now, when you install this, this uh, larger spring, it's the same way. It's 4,000 wire size larger than this, kind of like shifting gears. When you change to the next spring, whether it be smaller or larger, you encounter a whole nother uh, range of feet per second, per second and power uh, adjustment in the air gun for your specific pellet. These, for the Unjin, really heavy pellets, for cast bullets, for the, those really long bullets to, uh, to hunt with, uh, the way to go and the accuracy is still the same. It, it is just phenomenal. Uh, we've been shooting these and shooting them and shooting them. Uh, our test bench here in the shop, we shoot through a port in the wall since it's summertime and it's humid. Uh, the hole that we have to fire these through, you can still cover with a nickel. Now mind you, we've shot 20 rifles and well over two dozen shots per rifle to get the string set to check them all out. That really says something, guys. Never was there an issue with the accuracy, uh, and the power was just unbelievable and unexpected. Uh, thank you again, Snow Peak. The design is it's so easy to work on. I'm going to show you here in just a minute. This is just a brief intro, uh, but it comes with those things, the tools, the cleaning set. Uh, the only thing you really need is stuff you probably already have. Uh, flat tip screwdriver, very simple. Any type of small light to look down in the air tube and inspect it and clean it all out if you need to. Uh, over several times of disassembling it, putting it back together, little bits of O-ring, things like that you want to inspect for. And the good quality silicon grease. Now, we're going to keep this in stock for you guys. It's not a problem. Uh, we think it's very necessary to have good quality 
uh, grease for all our, our customers and we're going to offer this in a, a smaller uh, variety and a larger as well. So, you know, depending on how much you use it or how much you work on it, we'll have it here for you. Um, of course, we have the Huma regs and the Huma regs I can't say enough about. Uh, basically doubles the shot count. Uh, gets a really great string. You can short, start just under uh, 900, 910. Ease just over 900, 910 and back down, and it's just it's just a great thing. Uh, <clears throat> most of you guys have ordered this with your air gun. Uh, I, I'm pleased with it. I, I think you'll be pleased with it. I'm looking real forward to hearing your feedback on that. We're going to get to the video now and get to full disassembly of this rifle. We want to show you some tuning and some things you can do and some tricks and tips. Uh, just basic stuff, but want to go completely through it and let it be known that we want to, you know, we're a customer driven business. We want to save you some money and that $50 that, that we saved you, you know, on the Wingman Special, we'd like a chance to earn that back. Now this tune kit isn't going to be $50. It's going to be cheaper than that. In fact, our full tune is going to be about 89 bucks. It includes the complete Master Tune kit and us completely going through your B12 blueprinting it like we did for these first guys. Every O-ring in it checked, replaced, trigger adjusted, absolutely going from one end to the other. Okay, I'm going to go through this disassembly so you first guys will know what to expect if you want to get into it, adjust your regs or what have you. I'm going to quit running my mouth about the product and uh, we're going to get into this video and we'll let the customers do the talking from here on. All right, All right guys, we're going to get right down to it. Uh, this is your P12. Uh, I've showed you some of the stuff that comes in the Master Tune Kit. Uh, you'll need a flat tip screwdriver, some silicon grease, and uh, one other thing, uh, a small light, LED light. These are from Harbor Freight. They're just a few bucks. Um, any kind of small flashlight will work. Uh, that's just to inspect down the air tube and some other parts. Uh, let's get right down to it. The P12 is very easy to disassemble. You take your largest Allen that comes in the kit with the gun and simply loosen the two screws. These are two stock attachment screws and uh, we find that it's very easy to work on the P12. If, if you don't have a scope on it yet you can just simply sit it straight up like that. If you do have a scope on it you can have it on its side. I'm showing it this way for clarity but uh, you simply remove this. The trigger guard comes off with it and we'll set that aside. And the rear screw pretty simple just uh, counterclockwise once you broke it loose, there is a lock washer underneath there, so be mindful of that. All right, when you remove the stock, um, I will tell you, it, the safety is very close right here. So if you'll just put the safety on, it comes off very simply. Um, the easiest way to do that is to grab the rifle here and here. Either push it off like this or pull it straight up like that. It is a real nice fit, and we're going to set that aside. Okay, now. While you have it like this, uh, the next to the largest Allen wrench, um, you can remove the four bolts that hold on this trigger assembly plate. Uh, this is the forward trigger. And a few things about this, to adjust your first stage in this, uh, you can replace this spring with a slightly lighter one. I find the one that is installed is, is a really nice spring, uh, but you can install a slightly lighter one for a lighter first stage. Uh, the second stage is adjustable for both um, taking the creep out and it's also adjustable for uh, the tension in the second stage and I'll show you that in just a minute but uh, you simply remove these four bolts very simple uh, they're not tight at all I'll show you how we go about uh, tightening all the bolts on this here in a minute when we go to put it back together but uh, you simply re remove the, the bolts holding that plate and this trigger bar here uh, it's a standard right hand thread so go counterclockwise with it to remove it. It's about six turns, five, six turns generally. Um, remove that and just set that right there out of the way. Okay, You're already starting to get it pretty much stripped down. All right. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to remove uh, the air from the air cylinder. Anytime you work on a pre-charged pneumatic air gun, you need to remove the air from the air cylinder. Um, we feel that instead of shooting it and shooting it and shooting it to get all the air out of it, we have manufactured this degassing tool. All right, it's a very simple tool. It's machined on one end to fit inside the hammer itself, and I'll show you how that works. Uh, you take your your standard screwdriver and you remove the power adjuster. Very easy to to 
take out, you just simply unscrew it. It's got roughly three eighths to a half inch of threads, and you remove your hammer spring. Okay, this is the standard hammer spring. You can stand the P12 uh, up and drop this in machine side down. All right, wiggle it just a bit, and it'll fall right on down in there. You replace the power adjuster. I usually turn it backwards a little bit, and you can kind of hear it click that last thread, and then start it right back up in there. All right, when you Tighten this up, you'll feel it just touch. When it just touches like that, just a little bit of a turn will degas the gun. It just takes a few seconds. Okay? You can start slow, and then when it, the pressure gets lower, it will go ahead and, and speed up for you. you speed this process up a little bit. It just takes just that long, just a few seconds. It had about uh, uh, 2,000 psi in it. All right, you don't want to screw it in a whole lot, but uh, you get it screwed in there like that, and then you can, I'll tell you what uh, a, a neat feature of our degasser is, if you leave this installed, especially if you have small children in the house and you're worried about them getting a hold of this thing, you cannot open the breech with our degasser installed in there. So that's kind of a nice safety feature, okay? You leave the degasser in there, your kids can't get a hold of it, and even open the breech to even attempt to insert a pellet, okay? So just, a, just an added feature. But anyway, you remove the... Uh, the power adjuster one more time. We're going to set it aside for now, all right, with the spring right there, and you just dump the degasser right back out. Now, we'll set that aside. <clears throat> now we know that the gun has absolutely no air pressure in it. We can take off both the shroud and the protective cap for the fill probe. Uh, you can do it in either order you want. It doesn't really matter, but just uh, simply unscrew that. All the threads on this are standard right-hand thread. You can take off the end cap first if you like or the entire tube. I usually just take off the entire tube unless I'm going to clean out the tube. All right. When you remove this tube, simply unscrew it and pull it out the front. All right. And we'll set that aside. <clears throat> now, you can uh, take out either end of the, the P12 air tube and uh, I'm going to start with, uh, with the end for the fill probe and explain a little bit about our tool and how it works. <clears throat> The way our tool works is this fill probe hole is uh, it, it can have any burrs or anything like that or you're going to cut your O-rings and it's going to take away from the longevity of your air gun. The, the tool that we have is it's a real simple tool. This part of the tool is a precision ground shank shoulder bolt. Okay, It fits right inside that hole and since it is precision ground and smooth, um, it won't do any digging into the side of your hole or anything like that. Then you take our degasser tool, which is threaded, and screw it on to that shoulder bolt. And when you do that, after your rifle's completely degassed, it won't tighten up and pinch. It has a little bit of slack in there. And you can simply unscrew your front air tube cap. All right? Now, as we discussed before with Snow Peak upgrading the O-rings, uh, they did upgrade these O-rings to a little nicer O-ring than what they had before. We'll show you some pictures of the old O-rings. The new O-rings are a little better material, they are slightly oversized, and uh, you can either reinstall these or some others from the, from the kit. We'll just set that aside. And uh, next, we're going to go right into removing the entire breech valve hammer assembly and trigger complete. To do that, you get your largest Allen wrench one more time, and these four bolts you just unscrew them. I, I take them out about one turn. You can go to one to two turns out. There's no need to remove them all the way. There's no need to take the barrel completely out. Uh, when, you, when you do this, just unscrew them about one turn. What we do is twist it just a little bit. They're a little tight when they're new. Twist it just a little bit and pull it forward. You shouldn't have to come forward much more than about a quarter inch, quarter to three-eighths of an inch, and that's plenty. All right? <clears throat> Once you have it like that, we take and tighten these back up to hold it securely where it's not flopping around. All right, to do that, this is very important, guys. Anytime you tighten a bolt on the P12, you need to insert it long end down, and when you torque it down, use the short end, okay? That's kind of a torque limiter right there. That is plenty tight for any bolt, any socket head cap screw on the P12. You don't have to get carried away. It's very nicely machined, and it's very easy. To, uh, to get them just right, okay? Now, once you do that, you can see a little clearance here between the breech and the barrel. 
the o-ring is captured inside the breech so there's no worries at all there and you can simply unscrew the entire rear mechanism off the air tube and barrel alright this is where it comes in real handy to know these little tricks if you buy the P12 from us and you're you want to remove the the protective uh, preservative that comes in these barrels new you can take it off like this now you can clean the barrel from the breech end with any of these cleaning rods run some patches through it uh, if you want to run solvents that's okay because you're not going to get any in the valve or anything like that be careful not to get any in the tube you can inspect inside the tube clean out the tube run a few of the larger patches through the tube um, wipe out and check for any little pieces of o-ring or anything like that and inspect your o-rings but that's basically that torn apart guys this of course unscrews this has a small set screw if you want to take that off move it up or back or what have you okay we're going to set this aside for now and we're going to show you that that's just as easy as it is. I mean if you want to go any further than that <clears throat> there are two screws here for the side of your valve that just pulls straight out after you remove the breech and um, for those of you that that are installing the Huma Reg um, you just get one of the uh, the trigger retainer screws and the next to the smallest Allen wrench place it in one of these holes and simply unscrew it. I hold my hand over the end of it like this you don't lose any parts that way. It doesn't pop out very much, maybe a quarter inch at the most. Okay, and then you can dump out your your factory spring and replace it with the spring for the Huma Reg. Now the springs for the Huma Reg are uh, looks like a nickel coating, so you don't have to worry about any corrosion or anything like that. It simply re reinstalls and you you put the, the cap back over the top. This particular rifle, we're going to be putting a deep pinger in, so we're going to retain the factory spring. All right, get it centered up over the valve. Of course, the poppet will, will fall out if you'd like to look at it, inspect it, anything like that. We found them all to be in really good shape. All right, to reinsert that, we center the spring over it. You get it started with uh, light finger and thumb pressure just, uh, just to make sure you got the thread started really good and straight. And insult your uh, socket head cap screw. And I'll wrench a little combo again. One wingman's tricks and you don't have to tighten this down at all guys just to where it stops that's plenty <clears throat> there's some fine tuning available if you want to want to fool with that but uh, we find if you just go ahead and bottom it out with this stouter spring it really helps your shot count so that's pretty much all there is to that um, if you want to go further right now and, and disassemble it take off your breech it's these four socketed caps right here very simple. This rear one, you can get to with the bolt shut, and when you go to remove it, you can simply flip your bolt handle up like that, and the uh, socket head cap will come right off. Okay. Get these loosened up a little bit, and they'll come right out. This entire process just takes a few minutes. You'll you'll notice that the socket head caps in the front of the breech are slightly longer than the ones in the rear, so don't forget that when you go to put it back together. All right, and then you can separate the two halves, and you'll notice we have the transfer port uh, and the two O-rings inside there. Um, we replace those when we tune them ourselves. They have perfectly good O-rings in there, but for the longevity and just to know that everything is all the same in all of our rifles that we tune, we go ahead and replace any O-ring we come across anytime we disassemble this rifle. Now you can further disassemble this, like I said, by removing these two uh, screws here. The valve just slides out the front and you can remove your hammer and your trigger and all that. There's really no need to do that. We've, been, we've uninstalled several of these, inspected them, checked them all out. Uh, they've done the upgrades, guys. They, they've done what they said. Uh, it has the little ball to tin in it, all the upgrades that were mentioned. Um, we're going to put this back on here. This was just really to show you how easy it is to get into it as far as you'd like, uh, anytime you want to. Uh, once again, we're going to just start these. Anytime you have an assembly like this, start all the bolts first before you tighten any of them down. For those of you who don't uh, do things like this on the regular, uh, it's just a lot easier 
to get everything aligned properly. Like I said, flip that bolt up just a little bit, gives you a little extra clearance, and just get them all started and run them down until they just about touch. Okay, doesn't take much to do it. And after you get them all down and touching, you can snug them up. And please use that method I showed you before. Only torque the short end of the Allen wrench. That is very, very important, guys. The more you take it apart, the more important that is. Okay? Simply torque it with the short end. There's no need to over torque them, get carried away. All right? Now we're back together. You can replace this O ring. I definitely recommend inspecting it, installing just just a little small amount of the silken grease okay like I said before we always like to look down inside the air tube make sure there's no uh, dirt or grit this one's already been cleaned out and uh, this is the time you want to decide whether you're going to in include the uh, Huma reg or the deep pinger whichever way you go uh, since we haven't put this spring in there we're going to put the deep pinger in this one and they both install the same way the Huma reg goes this side into the air tube. Okay, it has a little O-ring in the back. You want to make sure and put a little silicon grease on both of those O-rings. And the deep hanger is the same way, just a just a little bit, doesn't need very much at all. And you just install it that side down, whole side down. <clears throat> and if you'll just drop it in there, all right, you can take two fingers, rock it back and forth, and you'll feel it try to start in the machine surface past the threads. Once it's there, that's as far as you need to go. The valve will push it in the rest of the way. If you get it in a little too far, the air pressure will push it back up against the valve, so there's no issues there at all. <clears throat> all right, like I said, you want to clean your barrel, what have you. Not any problem at all at this point. <clears throat> and you can reinstall the entire assembly all together. It's so easy to work on this air rifle. It's just it's crazy. The design is just over the top, in my opinion. Now, when you, when you get this thing all screwed back in, you don't have to tighten this very tight. <clears throat> the fit of this is not dependent upon uh, a compression fit between these two parts. The fit is between the O-ring and the machine surface of the inside of the valve and the inside of the air tube. So don't crank it real tight. If you'll notice, when you crank it all the way tight, it's slightly off-center. So just touch it, back it off just a little bit to where your barrel's line back up with the breech. You don't want any side, uh, anything pulling the barrel to one side or other. It should just go straight back into the breech. So it's nice to not have everything torqued all the way down and you're having to move all this and, and that kind of stuff. Just just have it to where it's loose like that. Okay. <clears throat> now, we want to reinstall some of the other components. We left our tool on our front cap and once again inspect your O-ring. Just a little dab of the Really nice silicon grease makes makes a world of difference. And reinstall that. Okay. Very easy. And with this tool, you know, you don't stand the chance of breaking off your fill probe. If you're trying to do this with a fill probe, it works nine times out of ten, but it only takes one time to break your fill probe, guys. Uh, and also, when you go to tighten this up, it's the same as the other end. It's not dependent on a compression fit. When it stops turning, bottoms out just quit there's no sense in uh, in tightening any tighter all these things will add to the longevity of your air gun alright you can remove the tool and set it aside now we're going to set it back uh, up. actually we're going to put the barrel back in first just turn it over this way you remember we tightened those screws up so we're going to loosen them back off about a turn maybe two turns at the most uh, but just take them off one to two turns and this is where you want to be careful guys when you push this back in there make sure it goes just easily right back in the breech just straight back don't try to push it over one way or the other adjust the breech left to right to where it goes straight back into the breech okay now we can just snug those back up notice I'm not torquing it with the long end I'm just snugging them up I don't ever want to get that confused guys because uh, you do not want to strip out the threads in this air gun then we can put our torque on them with the short end. It doesn't take a whole lot. All four screws. All right. Now we stand it up. We're going to reinstall this trigger system, but I want to explain one thing to you first. When we're adjusting this trigger, 
there's a small piece right here. This can be backed out just a little bit, maybe uh, a half a turn, one turn. What that's going to do is allow this sear spring to have a little less tension on it, okay? You want some tension, of course, so it functions properly. However, you can back that off of just a little bit and let your second stage be even lighter than it already is. It's a very nice trigger already. We don't see the need in doing that, but it's possible if you'd like to adjust it even lighter. You insert the rod in that hole, and we turn it in until you can look down through the top and kind of see those. i got silicone grease all over my fingers now. It's kind of tough to turn. Let's try it with my other hand. You just spin it in there until your holes here are close to lined up. And when they are, I like to hold this about a quarter inch off of this base so when you put these screws in there they'll stay standing straight up. <clears throat> Another tip, some guys were uh, discussing putting a nut back there. The way this system works, it actually pulls on that. So if you put a nut there and try to tighten it against this, you're just going to end up pulling the trigger. So uh, we find that they don't have a terrible amount of trouble backing off. If you do run into that issue, a little drop of Loctite or some uh, non-permanent sealant on that will go a long way. <clears throat> your second to the largest Allen wrench and you can line those up get them started once again we want to start all of them before we do any kind of tightening at all once you get them all started you can drop that and uh, just get them all run up no big deal very very simple very simple air rifle to work on uh, pretty much anybody can do it all right you need to, to, to follow my rules here, guys, and uh, torque with the short end. All right, now we can adjust the trigger. Now, to adjust the trigger, it's best to go ahead and reinstall the hammer spring. We're going to do that now. Um, if your sear is engaged, you can take off the safety and disengage it to push it forward. Your hammer spring should stick out the back about a quarter inch, regardless of the strength that you use. Okay, and then you reinstall your power adjuster. It's real nice, big, medium thread, so it's real easy to stick back in there. I generally start with it pretty much flush, and you can adjust it up from there. If you creep up on your adjustment and your power level, it seems to do much better than trying to back down from it, so I always back it off and push it forward. Now, <clears throat> when you cock your P12, you'll notice there's a window right here. I don't know how well you guys can see that. There's a window right here where you can see the actual sear engagement. Now, you can try the trigger now. We've got a, just a little bit of first stage. We're almost dead on on the first stage. And of course, dry firing it <coughs> won't hurt it. <clears throat> to adjust the trigger, what I recommend first is to back it off one, one and a half turns, something like that. Go ahead and back this, this uh, set screw, I mean this, uh, yeah, it's a set screw off that's right inside here. You can see this, this screw right here, and you insert the very smallest down wrench, back it off about a turn or so, no more than two, and cock the rifle and look into your sear. You want a sixteenth inch or less engagement here. For those of you who would like a really light trigger, you can experiment with that and get it as light as you want. If you turn this in too far, it will just release the sear, and we find that once the sear is released, if you'll back this up about three quarters of a turn to one turn, you're going to have a real nice light trigger. Uh, but yeah, we turn this in until it's right to the edge. It doesn't take much. And we can double check that it cocks reliably and still has not quite enough first stage. So we're going to back that out a little bit. Now it has a little bit of first stage and a real nice, crisp, clean trigger pull. Very, very nice trigger pull on all the P12. All right. Once you do that a few times and you're content with it, you can cock it, knock it around a little bit, nothing you know, too aggressive, but uh, the way this sear works, it slides forward, guys, so any of this here, um, if it discharges the sear, then you know you're way too close, so beware of that, okay? Um, now that we have this assembled back again, we're going to put the safety on because it makes it much easier to go back in the stock. It's just a little tight when you try it the other way. Put it inside the stock, push it down lightly, and we can reinstall the two stock retaining bolts with the largest Allen wrench. 
very simple. All right, you want to be mindful of this trigger guard. When you install this trigger guard, if you have it pushed slightly forward, it can be a little tight on the trigger there and, and almost touch. So move it just a little bit before you get all finished and uh, just be mindful of that. You can install the rear bolt. Like I said, install both of them first before you do any tightening. And once you get them in there, you can go ahead and uh, just lightly, lightly snug those up. Okay. All that's left now is to reinstall our dust cap or build the rifle and reinstall the dust cap. A little bit of lube on this o-ring here. Be a good time to clean out your shroud if you've been shooting it a lot. Slide it over the top. All right. Once you get past the threads, it's pretty much smooth sailing. And once again, the right hand thread, so clockwise puts it back on there. All right, we're going to show you a few pictures of some groups that we shot. With the rifle right out of the box with a protective coating in the barrel. All right, there's one. And then we're going to show you what it looked like with just cleaning the barrel. Okay. That's that target there. Now, this rifle was shooting extremely hot when we got it, about 985 feet per second with this just flush with a 21.1 grain Beeman Kodiak pellet. Fellas, it was way too hot. So that's what got us into blueprinting it, getting these springs and the transfer port and, and the valve springs all right. Um, even with that extreme velocity and falling off as it was, it still printed those groups. So now that we have these parts all working together in harmony, everything just as it should be, the group size is absolutely one whole groups. In every sample so far, they've been one whole groups. We shoot them at 40 yards, that's the distance we have behind the shop. I hope you guys have, have found this uh, video, you know, it, at least enough to be able to disassemble the rifle, be very comfortable with the rifle. Um, really no other further disassemblies required uh, the scope mount really doesn't need to come off. If you do, be sure when you put it back on, don't try to draw it up with the bolts, guys. Press it onto these brackets and then tighten these up, okay? If you try to pull that on there with that screw, you stand a really good chance of stripping those out. Once again, if you use the method of the Allen wrench and the thumb on the short end, you'll know if you have to exceed that, that type of torque, there's something wrong, okay? All right, guys, <clears throat> that's about it. We hope you enjoy your P12, and uh, I, I'm going to tell you, it's it's just been a phenomenal experience all the way around. I want to thank uh, Phil the Wingman, Snow Peak, um, everybody that's made this possible, Huma Regs, um, all those that have helped me in the tuning and, and the uh, working on this rifle and getting it the way it is. Never have I seen an air rifle with this much capability with this few of parts and this easy to work on. Never have I seen it. Um, I'm going to let the customers do the talking from here on out. We've sent the samples out. I uh, don't have any affiliation with them. It was just random chance the way they bought them. So, uh, looking forward to hearing from you guys. Thanks. We'll see you.